And now, the last section of the chapter, 8-6, Solving Rational Equations. So there's a couple different ways we could do these. In this first example, I'm going to go through both ways to do it. You should have room to write this down. And so um, the first thing you can do is if you notice that you have a fraction equal to a fraction, this is basically like a ratio is set up, and we can just basically cross multiply. So 3 times the x plus 4 equals 1 times the x squared plus 4x. Distributing and simplifying each side, we get 3x plus 12 equals x squared plus 4x. And so now since I have an x squared, that should make an alarm go off in your head that says, oh, I've got to have to factor this. So we're going to get everything over to the same side of the equation, so subtracting the 3x and subtracting the 12. So we're left with 0 on the left-hand side. Then we have x squared plus x minus 12. And when we factor this, we're going to get x plus 4 and x minus 3. So when we solve these, we're going to get x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 3. But you need to make sure that you kind of check your answers. And if you notice, if you were to plug negative 4 back in, we would end up with 0 on the denominator. And as you should hopefully realize and remember from when we graph these rational functions, you can't divide by 0. So we need to disregard that solution. And our only solution, and it works, is x equals 3. So let's look at this problem a little bit differently. And you might end up thinking that this is a little bit easier. So if we notice, we could factor that first denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 3 over, notice that you can pull out a GCF of x, and then you're left with x plus 4. And of course, that still equals x plus 1 over x plus 4. And now if you notice, both of these denominators have a factor of x plus 4. This first denominator has a factor of x. Well, we can remedy that by multiplying the other side of the equal sign by the numerator and denominator, x over x. We're multiplying by 1. We're not changing the value of anything. And so now we have this new equation. And if we were to multiply now both sides of this equation by x times x plus 4, and keep in mind that that's on the numerator, so the x and the x cancel on the left, and the x plus 4 and the x plus 4, one on the numerator, one on the denominator, cancel. So we're left with just 3. On the right side, again, the x's, one numerator, one denominator, cancel, and the x plus 4's cancel, and we're left with x. And if you recall, the other way we just did this, we ended up with x equals 3 also. When we do it this way, we don't end up with that extraneous solution that you should always make sure you're checking for. So how should we do this second example? Well, if you'll notice, both of my denominators, or I should say neither of my, my denominators, factor. So I could multiply through and get a common denominator and then multiply by that common denominator. That seems like a lot more work than what we did before, and let's just do that cross-multiplying. So 3 times x plus 2 equals... 5 times the 4x. And again, distributing and multiplying, we get 3x plus 6 equals 20x. Now just solving by subtracting 3x from each side. So we get 6 equals 17x. And then dividing both sides by 17, we end up with x equals 6 seventeenths. Now this next example. So there's a couple of different ways we could approach this problem, and rather than me do it two times or three times showing you those different ways, if, if you think you know how to do this, then I would encourage you to stop and do it in the method that you think that will work, and then come back and see if we get the same answer. Um, and if you're still unsure, because sometimes it can happen that you can coincidentally end up with the right answer, but your mathematics behind it isn't correct. So if you want to double check with me, feel free to do so. So the first thing that I would notice is that on the left hand side I have two fractions and so I'm going to write this as one fraction so multiplying I get 6 minus multiplying up I get x all over my denominator of 2x and now this equals still 12 over x. Well now that I've got a fraction equal to a fraction it's a little bit easier to see that they both have a factor of x this left one has a factor of 2, so I can remedy that by multiplying the right side by 2 over 2. 
And so now I get 6 minus x over 2x equals 24 over 2x, multiplying that numerator. And again, if I were to multiply both sides of this equation by 2x, that denominator would cancel, and I would end up with 6 minus x equals 24. Subtracting 6 from both sides, I get negative x, because remember that that negative stays with the x, so negative x equals 18. Dividing by negative 1, I get x equals negative 18. I'd like you to go ahead and try this next example. Um, again, I'll give you a hint or two to get you started, and that basically is don't forget that this is on the left, or I'm sorry, on the right. It's going, it's two terms. So remember that this 4 is 4 over 1, and now we need to either get a common denominator through on everything, or you could write the right hand side as one fraction and then do your cross multiplying. So, however you see fit, go ahead and try to do this one. And we'll talk about this one tomorrow in class. And now we're going to move on. Oh, before we move on to our word problems, I want you to remember a few things. Um, so remember that rate times time equals distance. But if we're talking about more than one thing um, covering a distance, we could have rate 1 times time 1 plus rate 2 times time 2, and that's going to equal a total distance. So this might be applicable, um, for instance, though we're not going to deal with it in this chapter with rational equations, um, but if we were dealing with two trains leaving different stations and when would they meet, we would use this kind of formula. We can also change this, it's similar in context, to the price of something times the number that I'm buying plus the price of a second item times the number I'm buying of it, and that's going to be the total amount that I spend or if I'm selling things, the total amount that I would make. We might also have mixture problems. So the percentage of the mixture, or the amount of the mixture, the, the rate that I'm mixing it with the amount that I have, plus a second amount and a percentage of it is going to be the total blended mixture. So now with this in mind, let's go ahead and look at a couple word problems. So the coolant in a car radiator is a mixture of antifreeze and water. The recommended mixture for your car, my car, is 50% antifreeze. If I have 7 liters of coolant that, because of another vehicle, is only 40% antifreeze, how much antifreeze should I add to bring the mixture up to the recommended amount for my vehicle? So let's make sure we understand what we're talking about. We have a 40% mixture. We're going to color that light pink because it's not quite as strong as we need. We need a 50% mixture. And so how can we make it so this 40% mixture is what we need is a 50%? Well, we can add this stronger mixture to our 40%, and then by mixing the stronger and the weaker, we'll end up with that middle blend. So we've got our 40% mixture. We need a 50% mixture. And we've got our 100% mixture. So let's take a look at what we have. Well, we have 7 liters of this 40%. And we need to add 100%. Well, how much are we going to add? That's what we don't know, so that's going to be our x. And how much are we going to end up with? Well, if I have 7 liters and I'm adding x liters, then 7 plus x is the amount of the 50% mixture that I'm going to end up with. So how do we put this in an equation? Well, I've got 40% as a decimal is 0.4 times the amount that I have plus I need to add the 100%, so that would be 1.00 as a decimal, times the amount of that that I need, and I need to end up with a 50% mixture, and the quantity is going to be that 7 liters of the 40% plus the x liters of the 100%. And again, this goes back to this um, model of the rate or the percentage times the amount plus the rate times the amount is going to be the total mixture. And now we just have to solve this equation. 2.8 plus x distributing we get 3.5 plus 0.5x now subtracting the 0.5x from both sides and subtracting the 2.8 from both sides we end up with 0.5x equals 0.7 Dividing by 0.5, we get x equals 1.4. So what does this mean? Well, recall that x is the amount of 100% antifreeze. So we need to add 1.4 liters of antifreeze. 
And the last problem, it takes Rachel six hours to clean the entire house by herself. If I help her, it takes only four hours. How long would it take me to clean the entire house alone? So again, we're kind of dealing with a rate times a time. How long would it take us? What's our rate? Plus, there's two of us working, and we need to complete a total, well, we're not dealing with a total distance, but we are dealing with a total job. And so let's take a look at this. We have Rachel. It takes her six hours to clean the house. So how much is she getting done each hour? In one hour, she's getting one-sixth of the job done, so she's working at a rate of one-sixth per hour. And how about me? Well, how long does it take me? Well, that's what I need to find out. So it's going to take me X hours. That's what I need to know. That's what my variable is. And so in the same way, how much am I getting done each hour? Well, I'm getting one X of it done per hour, so my rate is 1 over X. So let's go ahead and put this in. Rachel's rate is 1 sixth times her time. Well, I'm helping her. We're doing it together. So we're both, I guess, on this job going to be working for four hours plus my rate, which is 1 over x, and again, we're working four hours together, and this is going to equal one entire house. Now, if we were going to want to know how long it would take to clean three houses, then this would be equal to three, because we're initially given that it takes six hours to clean one house. So be careful to make sure that, depending on what this is equal to, Again, simplifying this, it's 4 over 1, so when we multiply, we get 4 sixths, plus, again, the 4 is over 1, so 4 over x equals 1. Let's get the right-hand side in one fraction, so multiplying, we get 4x plus 24 over 6x equals 1. Well, it's easy enough to write 1 as 6x over 6x, and again, if we were to multiply both sides by 6x, our denominators would cancel. So we end up with an equation of 4x plus 24 equals 6x. Solving this for x, we end up with x equals 12. So it would take 12 hours for me to clean the house by myself. All right, so this is the end of the chapter. We all know what that means. Please make sure that you're looking everything over. Make sure you get your questions answered, and we'll see you tomorrow in class.